The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 8 through 12, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on November 27, 1968, in Los Angeles. I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drawing up my senses. I will not even be able to destroy it if I win an un unrivaled kingdom on the earth with sovereignty like the demigods of heaven. Samjaya said, Having spoken thus, Arjuna, chastiser of the enemies, told Krishna Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. O descendant of Bharata, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief stricken Arjuna. The blessed Lord said, uh, When we become very serious in a danger, dangerous position, as if uh, we are lost. Uh, but Krishna's mind, sometimes we think this is called illusion. Uh, the same example, just a man in dreaming crying, there is a tiger, there is a tiger, it is eating me. And the man who is asking his mind, <laughs> where is the tiger? Where is the tiger? And this man is crying, tiger, tiger, tiger. Similarly, when we are very much perplexed, just like the politicians, they are sometimes perplexed in political situation and claiming uh, this is my land, my country. The other party also claiming it is my land, my country, and they are fighting very gravely for uh, Krishna's mind. So what this nonsense of claiming my country, my land? It is my land and they are claiming my land and fighting. Actually, the land belongs to Krishna, but these people, under illusion, claiming uh, it is my land, it is my country, forgetting how long you uh, he shall belong to this country or this uh, nation. That is called illusion. So, this is our position. Uh, Without understanding our real position, we are perplexed with these whole worldly problems, which are all false. Janasya moho yang ahanga moho means. Moho, moho means illusion. This is illusion. Everyone is under this illusion. So one is intelligent, if he can understand that this worldly position is simply illusion, uh, the, all the thoughts which have concocted based on the principle of I and mine, this is all illusion. Uh, so one, and one is intelligent, to get out of the illusion, illusion, he surrendered to a spiritual mark. That is being exemplified by your John. When he is too much perplexed, he was talking with Krishna's friend, but he saw that this friendly talking will not solve my question, and he selected Krishna because he knew the value of Krishna. At least he ought to have known his friend. Uh, and he knows that Krishna is accepted, although he is acting as my friend, but uh, by great authority Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Personality of God. That was known to us. <coughs> so, uh, he said that, I am so much puzzled that I, 
I cannot understand. Even accepting that I shall be victorious in this battle, still I shall not be happy. What to speak of being victorious of this planet? If I become the king of all other planets, or if I become a demigod in the higher planetary system, still this uh, this test uh, cannot be mitigated. Verse 11, the Blessed Lord said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worth your grief. Those who are wise will not need it for the living nor the dead. Purport. The Lord at once took the position of the teacher and chastised the student, calling him indirectly a fool. The Lord said, You are talking like a learned man, but you do not know that one who is learned, one who knows what is body and what is soul, does not lament for any stage of the body, neither in the living nor in the dead condition. As explained in later chapters, it will be clear that knowledge means to know matter and spirit and the control of both. Arjuna argued that religious principles should be given more importance than politics or sociology, but he did not know that knowledge of matter, soul, and the supreme is more important than religious formularies. And because he was lacking in that knowledge, he should not have posed himself as a very learned man. As he did not happen to be a very learned man, he was consequently lamenting for something which is unworthy of meditation. The body is born and is destined to be vanquished today and tomorrow. Therefore, the body is not as important as the soul. One who knows this is actually learned. For him, there is no cause for lamentation in any stage of the material body. Well, no. mm. he says, Krishna says that this body either dead or alive, has nothing to be lamented. Dead body, suppose when the body is dead, it has no value. What is the use of lamenting? Uh, you can lament for many thousands of years, it will not come to life. So there is no cause of lamenting on dead body, and so far Spirit soul is concerned, that is eternal. Even if it appears to be dead, or the death of this body, he does not die. So why one should be one when, oh, oh, my father is dead, my person, person is dead and crying. He is not dead. But this, this knowledge one must have. Uh, then he will be cheerful in all cases, and he will be uh, interested simply in Krishna consciousness. There is nothing to be lamented for the body, either alive or dead. That is being instructed by Krishna in this chapter. Well, Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Purport. In the Vedas, in the Kathi Upanishad, as well as in the Svetasvara, Svetasvatara Upanishad, it is said that the Supreme Lord... Shita Shatta. Shita Shatta. There are many uh, Upanishads. They are called Vedas. Upanishads are the... Uh, Headlines of the Vedas. That's like in a chapter, there is a headline. Similarly, these Upanishads are the headlines of the Vedas. Got open. There are 108 Upanishads. Principal. Out of that, nine Upanishads are very important. So, out of those nine Upanishads, Sita Satara Upanishad, Taitariya Upanishad, Oitariya Upanishad, Isha Upanishad, Mandu Upanishad, Mandukha Upanishad, Katho Upanishad. These Upanishads are very important. And whenever there is argument on some point, they, one has to give reference from this Upanishad. 
one can give reference from the Upanishad, then his argument is very strong. Sabda Praman. Praman means evidence. Evidence, if you want to uh, gain in, in your case, just like you have to give uh, very nice evidence in a court. Similarly, uh, according to Vedic culture, the evidence is praman. Praman means evidence, sabda praman. <coughs> there are three kinds of evidences accepted by the learned scholar in Vedic culture. The one evidence is pratyaksha. Pratyaksha means direct mercy. Just like I am seeing you, you are seeing me. I am present, you are present. This is direct mercy. And there is another evidence uh, which is called konuva. Suppose in that room, <clears throat> and I, I am coming just now, I do not know whether any person there is or not, but there is some sound. I can imagine uh, there is somebody. This is called onuma. In logic it is called hypothesis. That is also evident. He, by my bona fide suggestion, I can give evidence. That is also accepted. So direct evidence and uh, what you call it, hypothesis or suggestion evidence. But the strong evidence is sabda prama, sabda, sabda brahma. That means Veda. If one can give evidence from the quotation of the Vedas, then it is. It has to be accepted. Nobody can deny the Vedic evidence. That is the system. Uh, how it is so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given very nice example. That is in the Vedas. Just like we keep corn cell in the deity's room, corn cell is considered very pure, transcendental. Otherwise, how you can keep before deity and you uh, blow corn cell, you offer water with corn cell, how you can offer? But what is this corn cell? The corn cell is the bone of an animal. It is nothing but born of an animal. But the basic injunction is that if you touch the bone of an animal, you will have to take bath immediately. You become impure. Now one may say, oh, this is contradiction. In one place it is said that if you touch the bone of an animal, then you have to purify yourself by taking bath immediately. And here the bone of an animal is in the deity's room. It is contradiction, is it not? If bone of an animal is impure, how we can place it in the deity's room? And if bone of an animal is pure, then what is the meaning of becoming impure and take part. We find similar contradiction in the Vedic Indian. But because it is said by the Vedas that bone of an animal is impure, you have to accept. But this bone of an animal can't sell is pure. Just like sometimes our students are perplexed when you say that onion is not to be taken. But onion is a vegetable. So, 
there. Sabda Praman means the Vedic evidence should be taken in such a way that no argument. There is meaning, there is no contradiction. There is meaning. <clears throat> Just like several times I told you that cow dung, cow dung is according to Vedic injunction, is pure. And in India it is actually used uh, as antiseptic. In villages especially there is large quantities of cow dung and they are all over the house. Uh, they are smeared to make the house antiseptic. And actually after smearing cow dung in your room, when it is dry, you will find refresh everything and set. It's a practical experience. And one doctor, Gosha, a great chemist, he examined cow dung. So why cow dung is uh, so much uh, <coughs> important in the Vedic literature? Uh, he found the cow dung contains all the antiseptic properties. In the ice bed, cow dung dried and burnt into ashes is used as tooth powder. This is very antiseptic tooth powder. Similarly, uh, there are many things, many injunctions in the Vedas which may apparently appear as contradiction. But they are not contrary. They are uh, on experience, on transcendental experience. Just like a father says uh, to, a, to his child that, my dear child, you take this food. It is very nice. And the child takes, believing the father, authority. The father says, uh, the child knows that my father, he is confident that my father will never give me anything which is false. Therefore he accepts it blindly, without any reason, without any analysis of the food, whether it is pure or impure. Uh, you have to believe in such a way. Uh, you go to a hotel because it is licensed by the government. You have to believe when you take food stuff there, it is nice, it is pure, or it is antiseptic, or it is. But how do you know it? The authority. Because this hotel is authorized by the government, it has got license. Therefore, you believe. Similarly, Sabda Praman means. As soon as there is evidence in the Vedic literature, this is this, your best, that. then your knowledge is perfect because you are accepting things from the perfect source. Similarly, Krishna, Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whatever he says, ah, it is all right. Accept. I was doing sales at last. Sarva Vinitam Ritangamanne. My dear Krishna, whatever you say, I accept it. That should be our thing. Uh, why should we bother about researching uh, when the evidence is there from the authority? So, to save time, to save trouble, one has to accept the authority, actual authority. This is the Vedic process. And therefore Veda says, Tadvigyanatham sa guru me ima vidya chet. Tadvigyanatham, in order to learn that transcendental science, one has to accept guru, guru meva. Certainly one must. Otherwise there is no possibility. Therefore, uh, Krishna 
he is accepted here as the spiritual master of his zone and as the spiritual master or father or teacher has got right to chastise his son or disciple. Uh, his son is never a dissatisfied when father chastises. Uh, there is a etiquette and everywhere. Uh, even the father is sometimes violent. The uh, child or the son tolerates. The typical example is Prindar Mahārāja. He knows a child, Krishna consciousness child, but his father taught him. He never says anything. All right. Similarly, Krishna, just after taking the position of the spiritual master, is designating Arjuna as a grand fool. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also said that my spiritual master found me a great fool. Was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a fool? And can it be possible that anyone can become the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Both things are important. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even not accepting him as incarnation of Krishna is simply accept him as ordinary scholar or man. There was no comparison of his scholarship. But he says that my spiritual master found me a great mood. What is that meaning? that a person even in my position always remains a fool before his spiritual master. That is good point. Nobody should impose that what you know, I know better than you. This position is not denied. And other point is, from the disciple's point of view, why he should remain always a fool before a person unless he is actually authorized, actually so great that he can teach me uh, as a fool. One should select a spiritual master in that way, and as soon as the spiritual master is selected, one should remain always a fool, uh, although he may not be a fool. But the better position is uh, like that. So, uh, Arjuna, instead of remaining on the same level as friend and friend, voluntarily accepting to remain a fool before Krishna. And Krishna is accepting that you are a fool. You are talking just like a learned man. But you are a fool uh, because you are lamenting on a matter which no learned man laments. That means a fool laments that you are a fool. Therefore you are a fool. It is in a <coughs> roundabout way, uh, just like uh, what is called in logic is a parenthesis or something like that. Yes, that if I say that uh, you look like that person who stole my watch, that means you look like a thief. Similarly, Krishna in a roundabout way says that, my dear Arjun, you are talking just like a learned man. But you are lamenting on a subject matter which no learned man laments. Ron? It is better to call Upanishad, it is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the maintainer of innumerable living entities in terms of their different situations according to individual work and the reaction to work. That Supreme Personality of Godhead is also, by its plenary portions, 
alive in the heart of every living entity. Only the saintly persons who can see, within and without, the same Supreme Personality of Godhead can actually attain to a perfect peace eternal. The same Vedic truth enumerated herein is given to Arjuna, and in that connection to all persons in the world who pose themselves as very learned but factually have very poor fund of knowledge. The Lord says clearly that he himself, Arjuna, and all the kings who are assembled in the battlefield are eternally individual beings, and that the Lord is eternally the maintainer of the individual living entity. What is the original verse? Uh, is it? Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these Now, things. never there was a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor these people. Now, he analytically says, I, you, and first person, second person, and third person. That is complete. I, you, and others. So, Krishna says, never there was a time when I, you, and all these persons who have assembled in this battlefield uh, did not exist. That means, in the past, I, you, and all of them, they individually existed. Individually. The Mahavadi theory is that the ultimate spirit is impersonal. Then how Krishna can say that never there was a time when I, you, and all these persons uh, uh, never existed. That means I existed as individual, you existed as individual, and all these persons who are before us, they also existed as individuals. Uh, never there was a time. Now, uh, what is your uh, answer, Dinda? Krishna says, never we were mixed up. We are all individuals. And he said, never we shall remain, uh, never there will be time when we shall not exist. That means in the past we existed as individuals. In the present there is no doubt we are existing as individuals. And in the future also we shall continue to remain as individuals. Then when the impersonal conception comes at all, In the past, present, future, there are three times. Huh? And all the times we are individual. Then when God becomes impersonal or I become impersonal, you become impersonal. Where is the chance? Now Krishna clearly says, and there was never a time when I, you, and all these uh, individual a king or soldiers, and that there's not that, that we did not exist in the past. So in the past we existed as individuals, and the present there is no doubt we are existing as individuals. You are my disciple, I am your spiritual master, but you have got his individuality, I have got my individual. If you don't agree with me, you can leave me. That is your individual. So, if you don't like Krishna, you cannot become in Krishna consciousness. That is an individuality. So this individuality continues. Similarly, Krishna, if he does not like you, he may refuse you, Krishna consciousness. Not that because you are following all the rules and regulations and Krishna is obliged to accept you. No. If he thinks that he is nonsense, I cannot accept you. He will reject you. So he has got individuality, you have got individuality, everyone has got individuality. Where is the question of impersonalism come? There is no possibility. And if you don't believe Krishna, you don't believe uh, Vedas, apart from anything else, Krishna is accepted as the supreme authority, 
the personality of Godhead, then if you don't believe Him, then where is the possibility of advancing in knowledge? There is no possibility of So there is no question of individuality. This is the statement of authority. Now, apart from statement of authority, you have to apply your reason and argument. Oh. <clears throat> Can you say uh, anywhere there is agreement between two parties? No. Go study in the state or in the family, in the community, in the nation. There is no agreement. Uh, even in the assembly, even in your, your country. Uh, suppose there is sinner. Everyone has got country's interest, but he is thinking in his individual way. One is thinking that my country's welfare will be in this land. Otherwise, why there is competition during election of president? Everyone is saying that uh, America needs Nixon. And another president, he also says, America needs me. Uh, so, but why too? If America needs you, or you, you are both and no, there is individuality. Mr. Nixon's opinion is something else, Mr. Another a uh, candidate's opinion is something else. And the assembly, in the Senate, in the Congress, in the United Nations, everyone is fighting with his individual view. Ah. Otherwise, why there are so many flags in the world? You cannot say anywhere impersonality. Personality is predominating everywhere. Everywhere. The personality, individuality is the dominant. So we have to accept. We have to apply our reason, arguments, and accept the authority. Then the question is solved. Otherwise, it is what difficult. The supreme personality of God is, is the supreme individual person, the large man, the Lord's eternal associate, and all the things assembled there are individual, eternal persons. It is not that they did not exist as individuals in the past, and it is not that they will not exist, not, they will not remain as eternal persons. Their individuality existed in the past, and their individuality will continue in the future without interruption. Therefore, there is no cause for lamentation for anyone of the individual living entity. In my body or a personal theory, that after liberation the individual soul, separated by the covenant of Maya or illusion, will merge into the impersonal Brahman now, the Mahamadi says that this individuality is uh, Maya. So, uh, their conception is that uh, spirit, the whole spirit is a lump. Uh, their theory is Ghatakas Patakas. Ghatakas Patakas means just like sky. The sky is an expanse, an impersonal expanse. So, in a pot, in a water pot, in a pitcher that is closed, now within the pitcher there is also sky, a small sky. Now as soon as the pitcher is broken, the outside the bigger sky, and a, a small sky within the pitcher mixes. That is Mahamati. But this analogy cannot be applied. Analogy means points of similarity. Uh, that is the law of analogy. The sky cannot be compared, the small sky within the pitcher cannot be compared with the living entity. It is material, matter, sky is matter, and individual living entity is spirit. 
So, how you can say that like a small ant, it is spirit soul, it has got its individuality. But a big dead stone, hill or mountain, it has no individuality. So matter has no individuality. The spirit has individuality. So if the points of similarity differ, then there is no analogy. There is a law of analogy. So you cannot analyze, analogize with matter and spirit. Therefore this analogy is salat. The ghatāka, spatāka. Then another evidence is in the Bhagavad-gītā. Krishna says that mavai vāṅsa jīva bhūta. These individual souls, they are my part and part. Ah. Jīva loka is anātama. And they are eternal. That means eternally they are part and part. Ah. Then when, uh, how this mayavad theory can be supported, that due to māyā, being covered by māyā, uh, they are now appearing individual separate, but when the covering of māyā will be taken away, they will mix up just like the small sky within the picture and the big sky outside mix. So this analogy is fallacious from logical point of view as well as from authentic Vedic point of view. They are eternally fragments. And there are many other evidences from Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita says that a spirit cannot be fragmented. So if you say that by covering of māyā, the spirit has become fragment, and that is not possible. Uh, it cannot be cut. Just like if you cut one big piece of paper into small fragments, it is possible because it is matter. But spiritually it is not possible. Spiritually, eternally, the fragments are fragments, and the Supreme is Supreme. Krishna is the Supreme, and we are fragmental parts, we are fragments uh, eternal. These things are explained in Bhagavad Gita in different places very nicely. I request you all to keep one copy of this Bhagavad Gita, every one of you, and read it carefully. And there will be examination in the coming September. So, of course, that is voluntary, but I request you to prepare for the examination next September. And one who will pass the examination will get the title Bhakti Sat. Have you distributed that? Wow. There are some theories that we only think of individuality and conditioned state support herein. Krishna clearly says that in the future also, the individuality of the Lord and others, as it is... Krishna said, never says that after liberation, these individual souls will mix up with the Supreme Soul. Krishna never says in the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. Krishna clearly says that in the future also the individuality of the Lord and others, as it is confirmed in the Upanishads, will continue eternally. This statement of Krishna is authoritative. Yes, Upanishad says, Nitta Nityana. Now, Nitta means eternal. And the Supreme Lord is the Supreme Eternal. And we, individual souls, we are also uh, many times. 
So he is the leader eternal. Eka bahuna, how he is leader? Eka bahuna am vidudhati kaman. That one singular number eternal person, he is supplying all the needs of other eternal. These things are clearly said in the Veda. And actually, we are experiencing, uh, just like uh, in Christian theology, the individual goes to the church and prays God, uh, give us our daily bread. Why? He is asking God. Of course, this ethics class of men are now teaching them, uh, where is bread? You are going to church. You come to us. We shall supply you bread. So, this uh, Vedic thought is there also. The Veda says, Eka bhunam vidudati kama. That Supreme One, eternal, He is supplying, He is maintaining all other individuals, eternal. And the uh, Bible also uh, enjoins that you go ask for your bread to God. Unless God is maintainer and supplier, why this injunction is there? Therefore he is the leader, he is the maintainer. And the Veda clearly says, this is the position, he is the supreme. And by knowing this, one can become in peace. That is the basic injunction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If the Mahamadi philosopher says that this statement of Krishna is in Maya, that he says that everyone was individual in the past. No, in the past everyone was one, lump sum, homogeneous. And by uh, Maya, we have got, we have become individual. If the Mahamadi says like that, then Krishna becomes uh, one of the hmm, uh, conditioned soul. He, he does not, he loses his authority. Because conditioned soul cannot give you the truth. Uh, I am conditioned soul. I cannot say something which is absolute. So Krishna is accepted as the absolute. So if the Mahavadi theory is accepted, then Krishna's theory has to be rejected. If Krishna is rejected, then there is no need of reading Krishna's book, Bhagavad Gita. It is usually a waste of time. If it is a conditioned soul like us, because we cannot take any instruction from a conditioned soul. So the spiritual master, he, even if he takes that he is conditioned soul, but he does not speak anything from his own side. He speaks from Krishna's side. So, uh, unless, the Vedic principle is that unless one is not liberated, from the material condition. He cannot give us any perfect knowledge. The conditioned soul, however he may be academically advanced, educated, he cannot give us any perfect knowledge. Only one who is above the condition of this material laws, he can give us the perfect knowledge. Similarly, Sankaracharya, he is also impersonalist, but he accepts Krishna, the supreme authority. So, one, Sam Krishna. Uh, Krishna is that supreme personality of God. The modern Mahavadi philosopher, they do not disclose this statement of Sankaracharya to cheat people. But Sankaracharya's statement is there. We can give evidence. He accepts Krishna as the supreme authority. He has written so many nice poems praising our worshiping Krishna. And at the last time he says, 
భజ గోవిందం భజ గోవిందం భజ గోవిందం మూడో మతి యూ హ్యావ్ స్కెల్ ఫూల్స్ యూ హ్యావ్ డిపెండింగ్ ఆన్ గ్రామా టు అండర్స్టాండ్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఆర్ నాన్ సెన్స్ భజ గోవింద్ జస్ట్ వాట్ ఈ గోవింద్ భజ గోవిందం భజ గోవింద్ త్రీ టైమ్స్ ఈ సేజ్ జస్ట్ వాట్ ఈ గోవింద్ భజ గోవిందం భజ గోవిందం భజ గోవిందం జస్ట్ లైక్ చైతన్య మహాపురు సేజ్ త్రీ టైమ్స్ హరే నామ హరే నామ హరే నామ త్రీ టైమ్స్ మీన్స్ గివింగ్ టూ మచ్ ప్రేర్ Like we sometimes say, do this, do this, do this. That means no ordina. Finish. All stress. So as soon as one thing is three times stress, that means final. So Kankarajaja says, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Murha Mate. Murha, 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 I several times explain, Murha means that life. You are depending on your grammatical understanding. Do king karane. Do king. This, this, uh, these are grammatical affix and prefix. Pratta, prataram. So you are depending on this verbal root, that verbal root and uh, creating, interpreting your meaning in a different way. All this nothing is nonsense. This juking karnane, your grammatical jugglery of words will not save you at the time of death. You rascal, you just watch him, go in the, go in the, go in the. That is the instruction of Sankara Chagya. Because he was a devotee, he was a great devotee. But he uh, pretended to be a, an atheist. Because you have to deal with the atheist. Unless he presents himself as an atheist, the atheist followers will not hear him. Therefore he presented Mahabharata philosophy for the time being. The Mahabharata philosophy cannot be accepted as eternal. The eternal philosophy is Bhagavad Gita. That is the Bhagavad Gita. Individuality is not a fact, so Krishna would not, have, would not have stressed this so much, even for the future. The Maya may have... Yes, he says that in the, there was no such time when we are not individual, and there will be no such time in the future when we shall not remain individual. And so far present is concerned, we are all individual, you know. So where is the possibility of losing individuality, becoming person? No, there is no possibility. This voidism, impersonalism, their artificial way of negating the perplexing variegatedness of this material existence. That is, uh, the negative side only. That is not a positive side. The positive side is that, as Krishna says, తప్తాదేహం పునర్జన్మ నైతి మానేతి కౌంటి ఆఫ్టర్ గివింగ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ మెటీరియల్ టవర్నకు వన్ కమ్స్ టు మీ జస్ట్ లైక్ ఆఫ్టర్ లివింగ్ దిస్ రూమ్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఎంటర్ అనదర్ రూమ్ యూ కెన్ నాట్ సే దట్ ఆఫ్టర్ లివింగ్ దిస్ రూమ్ ఐ కెన్ లివ్ ఇన్ దిస్ కార్ సిమిలర్లీ ఆఫ్టర్ లివింగ్ దిస్ బాడీ If you go to Krishna and the spiritual kingdom, your individuality will be there, but you will have that spiritual body. When there is spiritual body, there is no uh, perplexity. Just like your body is different from the body of the aquatic. The aquatics, they have no disturbance in the water because their body is made like. They can live there peacefully. You cannot live. Similarly, the fishes, if you take them out of the water, they cannot live. Similarly, because you are spirit soul, you cannot live peacefully in this material world. This is foreign. But as soon as you enter into the spiritual world, 
your life is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge, real peace. Sattabhi hang punam janma naiti. Krishna says, after leaving this body, he does not come to this perplexity, some material world. Mamet, he comes to me. Me means his kingdom, his paraphernalia, his associates, everything. If, if you, if some rich man or some king says, all right, you come to me, that does not mean that is impersonal. If the king says, come to me, that he has got his palace, he has got his secretary, he has got his nice apartment, everything is there. How he can be impersonal? But he says only, come to me. This me means everything. This me does not mean impersonal. And we get information from Brahma Sangita. Lakshmi Sahasra Sata Sam Ramase Brahmanam Sudhavi Ravi Parayantam. So he is not impersonal. He is raising cows. He is with hundreds and thousands of goddess of fortune, his friends, his paraphernalia, his kingdom, his house, everything is there. So there is no question of impersonality. Yes. My body may argue that the individuality spoken of by Krishna is not spiritual but material. Even accepting the argument that the individuality is material, how can one distinguish Krishna's individuality? They also think of Krishna, therefore, as material. And that is, also condemned by Krishna, you'll find, abhajānanti mānamurha mānasim tanumāsa. Because I have appeared, just like a human being, these Vaskans derive at me that I am also one of them. Murha. Murha means that. Just like Dr. Rana Krishna says, it is not to Krishna. Uh, Krishna, it is the soul within the Krishna. That means he identifies Krishna as one of us. His body and his soul divine. So Krishna is not a, Krishna says, Sammavami Atmamaya. I appear in my own original nature. I do not change. We change. The individual soul, prakriti kriyamanan, he is conducted by, influenced by this prakriti nature. But he is not conducted or influenced by the nature. He comes in his own influence. As he is. Atamaya. This is the distinction. Therefore, he does not change body. When I come, I change body. This, this time I may have this body, next time I may have another body. Uh, that is material. And therefore, I forget. Just like Krishna says in the fourth chapter, that many times you and I came, we have forgotten. Because we change our material body, therefore we forget. These things all will be explained. Gone. Krishna has affirmed spiritual individuality in the past and confirmed the individuality in the future also. He has confirmed that individuality has many ways. It is first with Brahma has been declared the Lord of Krishna. Krishna has maintained spiritual individuality all along. As he is accepted as an ordinary conditioned soul, an individual consciousness, and his Bhagavad Gita has no value as an authoritative scripture. A common man with all the defects of human frailty is unable to teach that which is worth hearing. Bhagavad Gita is above such literature. No mundane book compares with the Bhagavad Gita. When one accepts Krishna as an ordinary man, the Bhagavad Gita loses all importance. Maya Bhati argues that the plurality mentioned in this verse 
the conventional, and that the plurality meant plurality refer, referred to the body. But previous to this verse, such a bodily conception has already been condemned. After condemning the bodily conception of living entities, how was it possible for Krishna to place conventional proposition on the body again? Therefore, the plurality is on a spiritual plan, as, as is confirmed by great teachers like Sri Ramanuja. It is clearly mentioned in many places in the Bhagavad Gita that this spiritual plurality is understood by those who are devotees of the Lord. Those who are envious of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead have no bona fide access to the great literature. The non devotees approach to the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita is something like a bee looking on the bottle of honey. One cannot have a taste of honey unless one can taste within the bottle. <coughs> Similarly, the mysticism of the Bhagavad Gita can be understood only by devotees. No one else can taste it, as is stated in this fourth chapter of the book. Nor can the Gita be touched by persons who envy the very existence of the Lord. Therefore, the Maya body explanation of the Gita is the most misleading presentation of the whole truth. Lord Chaitanya has forbidden us to read commentaries made by the Maya body. Yes, Lord Chaitanya has clearly said, Maya body bhasa sunile hai sadbunas. One meets a disaster if he hears a Mahamadi philosopher to understand Vedic literature. That is his injury. Mahavadi bhasya sunile hai sadbana. Sadbana means disaster. It is actually disaster. The Mahavadi bhasya, Mahavadi commentary, they simply try the individual teeny, individual spiritual path that you are the supreme. So he is just a doctor frog. He popped up, popped up when at one time he will bust. Therefore it is disaster. It's disaster. Mahamadi Vasya Sunile Haya Sadhana. Therefore the Mahavadi explanation of the is the most misleading presentation of the whole truth. Lord Shaitan has forbidden us to read commentary claimed by the Maya body and warns the one who takes the understanding of the Maya body philosophy loses all power to understand the real mystery of the Gita. If, indiv- if individuality refers to the empirical universe, then there is no need for teaching of the Lord. The plurality of the individual souls and of the Lord is an eternal fact, and it is confirmed by the Vedas as above mentioned. So you read very carefully Bhagavad Gita. You have to meet so many opposing elements, so you have to argue and convince them. Hmm. I read somewhere in the writings that in order to understand the uh, confidential affairs of Radha and Krishna, one must serve the gopis or a servant of the gopis. And uh, I assume that, that you were a servant of the gopis. Is that correct? Or how, how do I serve? How do I serve the servants of the gopis? The gopis, they are not uh, conditioned souls. They are liberated spirits. So first of all, you have to come out from this conditioned life. Then the question of serving gopi will come. Don't be at the present moment very eager to serve gopi. Just try to get out of your conditional life. Then time will come when you will be able to serve gopi. In this conditional state, we cannot serve anything. Krishna is what one But Krishna gives us opportunity to accept service in this archa-mārga, just like we kick the deity of Krishna of prasadam under regulation, under principle. So we have to uh, make advance in this way, this chanting, hearing, and worshipping in the temple, arati, offering prasadam. In this way, as we make advance, then automatically uh, he, he, Krishna is revealed to you, and you understand your position, how you have to. Gopis means who are always constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. 
So that eternal relationship will be revealed. Uh, so we have to wait for that. Immediately we cannot imitate uh, serving gopi. That's a good idea that we shall serve gopi, but it will take time, uh, not immediately. Immediately we have to follow the rules and regulations and routine work. Yes. The liberated souls also speak after this Krishna consciousness. Those that have become free. They become perfect in Krishna consciousness. Liberated soul means we are just trying to be Krishna consciousness. We are not actually in full Krishna consciousness. We are just like a diseased person is trying to be recovered. So one who is recovered, there is no question of his healthy life. We are trying to be healthy, our present position. So we are trying to be Krishna conscious. So one who is liberated, he is nothing but Krishna conscious. You follow? Yes. Krishna consciousness is the perfection of life. So we are trying to reach that platform of perfection by regulative means. But when we are actually on the platform, there is nothing but Krishna consciousness. That is the perfection of life. That is our actual liberative stage. Jibir Saru Nitta Krishna Das. That is our Sarup. Sarup means actual constitutional position. And mukti, liberation means to come to that real position. Uh, just like healthy life means uh, to come to the normal life from the disease stage. That is healthy life or normal life. So Krishna consciousness is our normal consciousness. This normal consciousness is now polluted. We have got so many other consciousness. So this is an attempt to get out of all, uh, I would say, infected consciousness, come to the real stage of pure Krishna consciousness. Hmm? Yasudev was afraid that Siddhartha Swami, when he was born, would leave home because he was already a liberated soul. Yes. But he was attracted to Krishna's pastime. Yes. So, so that is that. That is the um, sign of liberation. Because to become attracted by Krishna, that is our normal condition. So he was liberated, therefore. Normally he becomes attracted with Krishna's person. That is his normal life. One who is not attracted by Krishna's first time, he will be attracted by President Johnson's first time. One has to be attracted. One has to be uh, attracted by the dog's first time. Then you see a person how he is uh, serving the dog. The dog stands, a passes urine, he also stands. Okay. He is a human being and he is waiting for the dog passing urine. How much he is attending? The past times of the dog. So if you uh, not attracted by the persons of God, then you will have to be attracted by the persons of the God. There is no other alternative. 